Machine's ready. Here we go. Bob Newhart. Who portrayed Papa Elf in the 2003 movie Elf? Bob Newhart. What famous band took Gap. its name from a three-way intersection in Tulsa? That band. In the she cartoons, which character is distinguished she by got a his shot. prodigious skill at playing the piano? She wrote it. I know it. Pat. What she didn't listen. What Lionel Messi play? Soccer. Soccer. What legendary Apache leader is buried Geronimo. in Sill, Oklahoma? Geronimo. In what city was the TV show Golden Girls set? Miami. Miami. According to the poem, in what year did Columbus sail the ocean blue? 1492. Uh, mm, pass. What is traditionally worn under a Scottish kilt? Nothing. Nothing. Which human finger is the pointer finger? Index. Index. In Back to the Future, what type of car did Doc Brown turn into a time machine? A DeLorean. DeLorean. That's true, and you were doing really well. We she just was. Get back to those passes, we ran out of she time. She had two Rhonda. passes. Okay. Yes, a couple of and passes. And the people helping her work fast along. enough. Very nice. Uh, I have a KOMA prize pack for you. We didn't get the thousand bucks today, but well, I'll tell you uh, what. we have thirty days to wait. Seems to like she got again. a lot of extra time. Yes. You know what? It, it's one of those things. Time passes so fast when it's not supposed to. It so does. Did, right? How did you do with Rhonda? All of them. This morning, who portrayed Papa Elf in the 2000 Bobby movie? Bobby Newhart. Elf. It was Bob Newhart. She was good. good she didn't listen. Rhonda. She knew that. The famous band took its name from a three-way intersection in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The Gap Band. Gap. Yep. She got it. Greenwood, Archer, and Pine. Greenwood, Archer, cartoons, and Pine. Which character is distinguished by his prodigious skill at playing a toy piano? Schroeder. Uh, Rhonda passed on that one. We couldn't get back she to Rhoda. Schroeder. Schroeder, Rhonda. What sport does Lionel Messi play? Good for you. Soccer. Soccer. What legendary Apache leader is buried at Fort Sill, Oklahoma? G. Of course. Is he really? Ooh, Geronimo. Geronimo. That's right. In what city was the TV show Golden Girls set? Miami, Florida is right. According to the poem, in what Lose. year did Columbus sail the 1492. ocean? 1492. Rhonda passed on that one, too. It was 1492. What is traditionally worn under a Scottish kilt? Not well, a... if you're doing it traditionally, eh, nothing. Yes. Which human finger Nothing. is the pointer finger? That is the index finger. And in Back to the Future, what type of car did Doc Brown turn into a time machine? DeLorean. That was a DeLorean. Rhonda DeLorean. Really well. She passed on two. She got them all right. We passed on two of them and couldn't get back to them. Ran out of time. It happens. You know, the great thing about what's happening here, I say great thing because I had to find out in, in a weird way. And now we have a promo talking about it. Kevin, who's here 10 to 2. Thank you. During the midday, on the lunch hour for you. Jennifer Lee, who's here 2 to 7 as you're wrapping things up and heading for the house or happy hour or wherever you're going. You know what they're doing every day? They are giving away my first three questions and my first three answers. So, if you listen to Kevin and Jennifer during the day, you are 30% right there. Toward, uh, I mean, you're you're guaranteed at least three correct questions. You only have to worry about seven to win a thousand bucks, three thousand dollars on Thursdays. So keep listening all day. I guess it's okay that they're giving away my questions and answers. They didn't tell me. Let's try to win tomorrow. What do you say? Kind of you know, they had some good. Impossible. They had some good questions on there today. Exactly what I like. It gets me ready to go and it gets me energized. Ninety-two point five KOMA. Bonus points, what am I quoting? Cosmo. Chinese. Well, alright folks, it's Texas week. Now more tales from the Cotton Bowl. Uh, 
early, one of the early years was down there, 78s when I started going, I think I was a sophomore, uh, maybe in 80, it might have been 79, 80, my brother and I are down there and we're, we don't, we don't have any tickets yet, so we're just kind of jacking around, you know, what's going on? We're down in the Cotton Bowl in one of the ends, in the end zone. Would be one of the ends, wouldn't it? So we're down there, um, you know, climbing around, look up there in the bushes. These guys are kind of standing up there and they're kind of looking around like there's something going on. Like, well, nowadays you go, oh, run for cover! Um, so we hoof it on down there and um, hoof it up there because it's kind of a slope up there. And what they're doing is they're grabbing the bottom of the fence and pulling it right in the middle between two poles and there's just enough room to slide your skinny white butt right up under it and right into the cotton bowl. And that guy pulls up the fence and I scurry under. He pulls it up and Bradley scurries under and we're in. No tickets necessary. No tickets necessary. So, and then it's kind of like, a, oh, well, what are you going to, what, where are you going to go? What are you going to do? What, what's going on? So, um, uh, and I'm thinking this is 1981 now that I think about it. Um, so we go down to the sidelines, which there really wasn't very much security back then on the sidelines. I mean, there weren't any cops down there looking, you know, tons of people. And they kind of have it really blocked off now. So Bradley and I just kind of step over the gate and walk onto the sidelines and just stand there, you know, like, um, you know, <laughs> Like me and a buddy used to do at Godfather's Pizza. Order beer and then pour with confidence. <laughs> pour with confidence. Uh, and we were not 18 and we did not look 18 either. But we would pour with confidence, me and a, me and a buddy of mine. If you know who that is, you, you, you got some real bonus points. Um, what the fuck was I talking about? Oh yeah, True Blue was no, another story. Um... So we just walk out there and we're just like, you know, cool Modi and and uh, and this guy comes over and asks us, he says, hey, where's your sideline passes? And I said, well, we pointed at Bobby Bell and I said, well, Bobby Bell told us we could come down here and stand as long as we didn't get in the way. And that guy goes, okay. <laughs> and I think we did that two years in a row that we went down there and stood uh, two years in a row. Uh, on the sidelines at the OU Texas game. Um, we did not win that year. Texas was ranked. Texas was ranked number one in the country. I don't remember exactly. We may have been ranked. I don't think we were ranked number two because we had lost to USC and we had tied Iowa State. But uh, Texas was ranked number one. And I believe they ended up going six and five. And I think I remember watching their last game against Arkansas that year down at DRK Field and it was about, they won to go from 5-5 five and five to 6-5 and five, and it was about half empty or half full, however you want to look at it so, Tales from Texas and as a bonus this morning folks I'm going to tell you some tales of Lincoln, Nebraska so 1982 is that 82? Yeah, 82. Uh, we go up there, and uh, a good friend of mine goes with us. My mom and dad and me and myself and a good friend of mine. We go up there, and we're hanging. And uh, my dad had been up there a bunch of times before and was able to get sideline passes. And he had given them to me because I like to collect them. And I still like to collect them, by the way. Still do. So I gather up my sideline passes from 1978 and 1980 and take them with me. So we get to the, we get to the stadium and I tell my buddy, I said, here, tie this on your shirt. Here's Jan and I said, and I'll tie mine. We tied them on our shirts and uh, we got there really early. And, uh, and so we just uh, rolled up to the gate and uh, that guy pulled it out and looked at it. He goes, Come on in, come on in. And uh, we rolled right down to the sidelines and stood on the sidelines at 82 and Dupree was a freshman. And uh, it was kind of kind of 
strange because everybody had a sideline pass also had an armband, but we didn't have an armband, which is what they used to keep the riffraff at. And J.C. Watts was working for CBS down there doing some reporting on the sidelines, and J.C. didn't have an armband, and they kicked his ass right off the sidelines. And I remember standing there listening to J.C. going, okay, call Shirley Vaughn. Call Shirley Vaughn. And, uh, damn it, I miss my, I miss my freaking, anybody behind me? Dang it, I miss my, I'll go down here and go in the back way. I got to talking so much, I missed my entrance into the freaking post office this morning. I can't have that. I'm going to have to go in the do not enter sign. Do not enter. Do not enter. Oh, you can get over, dude. There you go, dude. There you go, dude. Ah, they're good. They're good. They're not going to worry about it. Nobody's losing their shit over me going the wrong way at the post office. Sometimes I get so enthralled with these stories. I'm surprised I don't have wrecks. But uh, it's all good. No, look, it's, it's homeless Paul. Okay. It's a good story. Don't go away. I'll be right back. You know, I could have used that new feature on the new iPhones called a pause button. Thank you. Next time, remind me, I'll use that pause button. All right. You made me lose my concentration. What the fuck was I talking about? About uh, True Blue was about a guy and a sensitive girl, but uh, Like a Virgin was a metaphor for a guy with a big dick. Yeah. So... So anyway, and they they just kicked JC's ass off there, and they're kind of behind a railing now, a little makeshift bench or whatever. And I can remember somebody gets hurt, and we're standing down there, and somebody, and, hey, 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 hey! I turn around, and the guy goes, come here, come here, come here, where he goes. It's right after somebody got hurt, and he goes, hey, how's a is that guy gonna play again? And what's what do you think the deal is? And I said, uh, and I was over there, and so I go, yeah, he's gonna be fine. He can be back right back in the game. So. We end up losing the game, but uh, Dupree had one of the one of his most iconic runs. Ran for like 87 yards for a touchdown. We lose 28-22, and Nebraska wins the Big Eight championship for the I think the second year in a row because they won it in '81 as well. And they won it in '82, but we got down on the sidelines, and it was pretty cool. And we had the fake passes. And my buddy, I I would like to think he st he wouldn't give it back to me. He wanted to keep it. I'm like, dude. And uh, I'd like to think that he still has it. So maybe he does and maybe he doesn't. So it's kind of strange. And here we are getting back on the old highway after the old post office drop off. It's 734 in the morning. Uh, if you didn't hear already, uh, let me just reinforce you about today's Minute Impossible. Um, she got 8 out of 10. She was not listening on Friday, or she would have got 9 out of 10. And she missed, passed on what I consider just to be layup. You know, when did, you know, when did Columbus sail the ocean blue? You know? may not have taught my kids anything, but I taught them that. 1492. So, 
tomorrow is yet but another day another day it's all about this cool so my eBay sales for the weekend not too not too shabbily well pretty shabbily um, you know, my, I just want to sell and I want to make, you know, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars a month off of it. But in order to do that, I got to sell, you know, twelve hundred dollars worth, which, you know, I'm, I'm right in that. I'm right in that area. And I don't I, I do not work it that hard. Um, I just don't. It doesn't seem necessary. I wonder if I scoot down that. If that leads just to another on-ramp where I could bypass everything and then get way over to get off on shish shish shish. Well, thanks, dude. Really appreciate this guy over here. Rides my shoulder like he's a fucking parrot. Come on over, Subaru. You're no friend of mine. Cisco kid was a friend of mine. So, back to my eBay sales. I sold two uh, OU 2001, which, man, that's a long time ago, uh, Sooner Schooner bobbleheads that you got at McDonald's back in 2001. Now, they were five bucks a piece in 2001. And I bought probably 10 of them. And I sold them all for 15, 20, 25 dollars a piece. I think I was getting 24.95 out of them plus the shipping. And man, they were expensive to ship because they wait. You know, no, you you can get on back on, but it's after she aisles. So, no getting off there because they weigh right at a pound, and that's kind of the cutoff for. Well, uh, that's got to go priority. So, and then I was at. Uh, I strolled into. Uh, Big Lots one day, not knowing, knowing. And they had them for 50 cents a piece. They had a ton of them. At least they did. Until I bought 200 of them. <laughs> I bought every one they had. I had tons of these things. And uh, I used to take them down. And if you parked in my lot, I gave you a free bobblehead. We were kind of... For some reason, we were, we were not as... Plus, we were $15. We had gone from... Ten dollars to fifteen dollars, and that was probably the the one time that people kind of said something. You know, oh, I noticed you went; that price went up. I go, yeah, I went to fifteen bucks. And uh, well, one of the big reasons why is pull forward, idiot. Um, is it was just you know. I think we were five, we went up and nobody else went up to 15. But we went up to 15. So the hell with it. And uh, I don't know. So that's when I started selling beer down there too. And I was selling a lot of beer. Man, I was going crazy selling beer. This guy walks up and goes, "Yeah, give me two. And I go to hand him two beers. He flashes his badge out on me. And I'm like, dude, that's so uncool. It's just like you know, a lot of people doing a lot worse things than what I'm doing. And I quit. That was the only time I ever sold beer, and I didn't even get a whole game in. Be here. Not a lot of foot traffic. So selling anything else is kind of a redundancy. Because you don't get a lot of foot traffic. And most of it is, is carrying a beer in each hand. But I guess I could get me like a 12-pack of Tall Boys. Or a 20-pack of Tall Boys put them out there five bucks each but gee if I sell 20 of them I get a hundred dollars you know gee a hundred dollars also remember I'd buy all that beer and Benny and start drinking it I go dude I yeah, whiny butt so what the fuck was I talking about oh uh went to 15 bucks and then a couple years later we'd park cars and we would be $15, $15. Uh, 
until the lot across the street filled up. Then we change our sign to 20. Yeah, we would. And that was 2007, 2008, somewhere there. 2008, 2007. Because in at the end of 2008, uh, the last game was Texas Tech, and I think they were ranked number one in the country. And we were like four. Uh, and they came to Norman. And we just charged 20 bucks. It was a night game. And we just kicked the hell out of them. That's when they did jump around for the first time. And people just went crazy. There's some there's some video of that on YouTube. You can see me doing jump around. I didn't put it on there, but somebody did. Uh, jump around, jump around. Uh, and they played it a few other times. Uh, when we beat Oklahoma State in overtime. When uh, my Facebook friend number 24 whose name always escaped, Brennan, Brennan Clay, mowed a guy and went into the end zone and threw the ball up, then they played jump around. Uh, and that may be the one where I'm, where I'm on there. I don't, I don't recall. I do, but I don't. Uh, here we are at 7.41 in the morning, rolling in. Looks like we're gonna have one more red light, but we don't have any traffic back in life. We're just kind of righteous bugs, righteous bugs. So back, okay. Okay, now that I'm off the Sooner Schooner story, I sold two of them, $8.88 a piece and $9.99 shipping. They cost about five bucks to ship. So make, make some off the shipping, make some off the product. Like I said, I paid 49 cents a piece for them forever ago. So what else did I sell? Good question. I sold a Frisbee from a Kansas City wide open and it was a, uh, I had never thrown it. It was a, oh, you have Innova, you have Discraft, you have, it was an off brand. There was Denova, Denova. There's Innova, Discraft, and then these guys. Uh, lightning is what it was. It was a lightning, piece of lightning plastic, which believe it or not is pretty collectible. Pretty collectible because they don't really make it anymore. And discs with stamps that are in a, that are lightning stamps are pretty rare, pretty few and far in between. So they're kind of a rarity, a collectible. Um, but I found that it just hasn't... Collecting discs for the stamps just really hasn't caught on in the sport yet um, it's more about just like everything else oh how much is this disc worth what's the do these have any value which is you know the American collectible market um, and you have a you know you have a ready outlet now to sell things is what makes it so everybody's so money hungry uh, what's the value of these and does this have much value well it, it doesn't matter if it's a you know if it's a disc from you know the frizz or it's a disc from uh you know the morley field open or uh you know anything the worlds the worlds are a little bit more collectible because if you didn't really play in that tournament why do you you know why do you want to collect something from from that tournament. So it really hasn't caught on yet. Uh, but, you know, and I did not get a huge amount of money for this really collectible disc from uh, the Kansas City Wide Open. Which, I mean, it's a... God, I don't know. It's a, it's a 30-something-year-old disc, at least. I got $12.12. .12. Six ninety nine shipping cost me about five fifty to ship it. Um, what the hell is that mall? I have to go check out what that mall is. And then, last but not least, the coup de gras, the best of all. Um, I threw up a Super Nintendo NES box, uh, Ninja Turtles, Turtles Four, Turtles in Time. All I had was the box. And it wasn't bad shape. It was kind of faded, but I hope you realize it was kind of faded. That sun's just like a real pain in the 
hyena at 7.45 in the morning. Um, it's a good time, rock and roll. And I got, uh, and it sold just like that. I got, uh, I think I got twenty nine ninety nine out of it, plus the shipping. So I got that going for me. And they all went off in the mail today. And that guy was hitting me up about something else, and I showed him a picture, and, and I had a really, really good uh, Game Boy Color box, um, Zelda something, something seasons. And the box was, the box sold for $95, and the little insert sold for 50 and then I found the game. I had the game as well. And uh, I put it on there at one seventy nine ninety nine, And a guy offered me one fifty five for it already. But, uh, you know, you want to buy it in the first 24 hours? One seventy nine. I, I think it'll sell today for one seventy nine. It's It's really, really nice. I just wish I had the manual. The manual. Manual. So, uh... Tomorrow, more Tales of Texas. Later.